Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Ala Musbah, professor of obstetrics and the gynecology faculty of Prince Mansour University. This is an ASCII in obstetrics. Let us try to answer the following ASCII. Station one. Look to this picture, please, and answer the first question. What is the fetal presentation and the position in this picture? As regards the fetal presentation, here, this is vertex presentation. This is two parietal bone, anterior fontanelle, posterior fontanelle, occiput. This is vertex presentation. Okay? Okay. What about the position? The denominator in vertex is the occiput. So, where is the site of occiput? Directed to the left or to the right, anterior or posterior. Here, the occiput is directed anterior and to the left. Usually, or always, the left side is the left side of the mother. Okay, so this direction is the left side of the mother. So, this occiput directed anterior and to the left, so it is left occipital anterior. So, the right answer is vertex presentation, left occipital anterior. Then the next question, what is the mechanism of head delivery? The head delivery in this case, in left occipital anterior, after rotation, its circle anterior becomes direct occipital anterior, then delivery will be in extension. The head is delivered in extension. Okay? okay. So let us go to the next station two. Look to this picture, please and define A and B. A, this is midline episiotomy. This is midline episiotomy. B is mediolateral episiotomy. Okay, notice the difference. It's clear enough. This is median episiotomy and this is mediolateral episiotomy. Okay, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of each one? In median episiotomy, in this picture, A, the advantage is that the incision in anatomical site in the midline, the less bleeding, better healing, okay? But what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage that maybe extension can happen and causing injury to the external inner sphincter or even the inner canal, causing complete perineal tear. Okay, so if extension occurs to the inner sphincter, may cause incontinence. So this is the disadvantage of median episiotomy. Okay, okay. what about the mediolateral episiotomy? What is the advantage that it is away from external inner sphincter? As you see, the external sphincter is here and mediolateral, so if any extension happen in mediolateral episiotomy will not injure the, the external anal sphincter. okay? So this is an advantage. What is the disadvantage? This advantage being more blood loss, more painful, less cosmetic than median episiotomy, okay? After healing, it is less cosmetic, and the repair is not easy like the median one, okay? Okay, so median one is easier in its repair. This is the advantage and disadvantage of both of them. What are the layers cut in A and B? In median episiotomy, the cut include the vaginal epithelium, skin or mucosa, the skin of the perineum, the subcutaneous tissue, the perineal body, because it is in the midline, okay? But in mediolateral episiotomy, the cut include vaginal epithelium, vaginal skin, perineal skin, subcutaneous tissue, superficial transverse perineal muscle, and the deep one, and the bulbocavernosus muscle. Okay? 
So this is the layer cut. Let's go to the next station three. Look to this picture. What is shown in this picture? This picture an obstetric ultrasound revealing one pregnancy. As you see, there is one pregnancy. And when you comment on one, you should say, what about amniotic sac? Is it one or two? And what is about chorionis? So this one is diamniotic. There is two separate sacs. Diamniotic. What about chorionistry? It is also dichorionic. How can I say that from ultrasound? By this sign, twin peak sign, this second layer is called twin peak sign. If it is present, so it is dichorionic. Okay, so in this picture, this is twin pregnancy, diamniotic, dichorionic. Mention four possible complications. We know that when pregnancy is maybe associated with many complications like hypertension pregnancy, gestational diabetes mellitus, premature labor, premature birth, okay? Also, congenital anomaly is higher in multiple pregnancy than in single twin pregnancy, okay? Let us go to station four. Plug to this picture, please. What's shown in this picture? And dimension three complications. In this picture, there is separation of the placenta and the retroplacental hematoma. As you see, this is hematoma, retroplacental, okay? So this is placental abruption, placental abruption, okay? Mention three complications. Placental absorption may be associated with shock, DIC, acute renal failure. Okay, so this is a very dangerous complication. What are the causes of placental absorption? Maybe another question. Hypertension with pregnancy is an important cause. Also, short umbilical cord, trauma to the abdomen, all these are causes of placental absorption. We have three types of placental absorption, conceal, reveal, and mixed type. Let us go to the next station, station five. Look to this picture. What is the difference between A and B? Back to the picture A. Cervix is closed and not effaced. As you see, the thickness of the cervix is the same. No change in the thickness of the cervix and the internal also is closed. While in picture B, there is thickening up of the cervix, what's called effacement. There is effacement of the cervix and also dilatation. So there is dilatation and the effacement. In figure B, while there is no effacement and no dilatation in figure A, okay? Let us go to the next station six. Back to this picture and identify this maneuver and its indication. This move is macrobert position with extreme flexion at the hip and the knee and the abduction of the leg. While the other hand doing supra pubic pressure, okay, what is the indication in cases with shoulder distortion? In cases with shoulder distortion, the head is delivered but the shoulder trapped. So, we are trying to do macrobert position and suprapubic pressure to give a chance for the shoulder to descend through the pelvis. Okay. 
So what is the aim of this maneuver? With macroberto position, there is cephalad or upward movement of the symphysis pubis, one to two centimeter. There is flattening of the sacral promontory. Both of them give a chance for the, the pelvis to increase in its diameter, especially the anteroposterior diameter. Okay, so flattening of the sacrum, the angle between the last lumbar vertebra and the sacral promontory decreased or flattened. The symphys view is shifted upward, if led. So this gave more space and facilitate the descent of the shoulder through the pelvis. Let us go to next station, station seven. Look to this picture, please. Identify this maneuver and mention two possible complications. This maneuver is branded Andrews maneuver or what's called controlled cord traction. It should be done during uterine contraction, gentle cord traction, while the other hand pushing the uterus up. Okay? This facilitates the separation of the placenta. It is used in active management of third stage of labor and the unretained placenta. Okay? Of course, after exclusion of placenta accreta spectrum. And after exclusion of presence of any twin pregnancy. Missed one. Okay? Okay. What is the possible complication? Uterine inversion may happen, especially if cord traction done while the uterus is relaxed. That's why I said the, the traction should be done, the gentle cord traction should be done during contraction. So if I wanna to avoid this complication, as in next question, I should do it gently and during uterine contraction. While the other hand push the uterus up. Okay. okay. What other complication? Retained remnants, postpartum hemorrhage. Okay. okay. So you try inversion, retained placental remnants, and postpartum hemorrhage. How to avoid? As I said, by doing gentle cord traction only during uterine contraction, okay? And also by giving the patient ectopolyx to enhance uterine contraction, like oxytocin infusion. Let us go to station eight. Please log to this picture. Please name and define the aim of these maneuvers. A, B, C, and D. Let us start with A. What is this maneuver? This is fundal grip. We're trying to palpate which part of the fetus occupying the fundus of the uterus. Is it the buttocks or the head? Okay? Okay. So this is the aim of fundal grip. Next picture B. What is the maneuver here? This is para umbilical grip. Why we do it? We are trying to know where is the back of the fetus, either to the right or to the left or anterior or posterior. Okay, so this is called para umbilical grip to detect where the back of the fetus or the position of the fetus. Okay, okay. Next. Figure C, this is the first pelvic grip. Why it is done? Trying to feel 
the fetal pool occupying the lower uterine segment. Is it head or buttocks or empty? Okay, head in case of vertex presentation. Okay, or face presentation or brow presentation or buttock in case of breach presentation or empty in case of transverse lie. So, this is the aim of doing first pelvic grip. Another aim also to palpate how many fifths of this of the head felt in the abdomen because the head may be engaged if only two fifths or less of the head felt abdominally. So we consider it engaged if two fifths or less of the head felt abdominally. If three fifths or four fifths or five felt abdominally, so the head is not engaged. Okay? So it will help us also in this situation. Next is figure D. This is the second pelvic grip done with two hands trying to feel the sense foot and the occiput. What is the aim? To know the fetal head attitude. Is the head is flexed or deflexed or extended? In case of the head is flexed, the occiput will be lower down than the sense foot. In case of head deflexed, occiput and the sense foot will be at the same level. In case of extended, the head is extended, this is the sense foot will be lower down than the occiput. Okay? So, what is the aim? To know the fetal head attitude from second pelvic grip. This is the last station. Thank you, everybody. Remember my books published in Amazon, textbook of obstetrics, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, and the multiple choice question book. Wishing you the best.